Hello everyone. Good morning. I am Master AJ, Master Bouncer AJ. And uh, today we have an interesting topic. Topic for the day regards Ramsey Dewey, who I will school in a moment. You know, I will preach to him in a moment because, you know, it appears he needs some preaching. So let's get to it, okay? I have my coffee and my smoke. I just woke up. So Ramsey was asked a question about uh, nightclubs and bars. You know, what to do if someone starts a fight with you or starts trouble with you at the nightclubs or the bars or whatever. Now Ramsey's answer, Ramsey's answer was... Uh, Well, he didn't really give an answer. His answer was to just stay away from those places. Stay away from the demon alcohol, my friends. You know, um, dangerous places, you know. What would you want to be around a place where there's fights, where there's violent people, where there is uh, this and where there's that, you know. So his answer basically to the question was to stay away from bars, stay away from clubs, You know, stay away from alcohol and all that shit. But you know what, Ramsey? Dude, like, that's terrible advice. If you don't know what to say, if you don't have the answer, don't answer the fucking question. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a terrible answer to give people. I mean, how many women do you think you have following your channel? Maybe not many. Maybe you do have some. But what are they supposed to think? Women love to fucking dance, man. Women love to go out. Women love... To be around other women, women love to compete with other women. They love going and dancing and uh, hooking up, maybe, and uh, or finding um, uh, the future boyfriend or the future husband or just a one night stand, whatever it is that women are looking for, right? People like fucking clubs. People like bars. People like to dance. People like to have fun. So for you to just straight out go and say, just don't go there because I don't have the answers. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that's not. Uh, it's okay if you don't have the answers to everything, you know? You have a very good channel. Most of the subjects you talk about, I like. I've Since the coronavirus started, I've been, I've been sort of following your channel. And some of the topics you touch, you know, like Muhammad Ali versus Bruce Lee, um, you know, martial arts topics in general. When you talk about all those things, you really know what you're talking about. That's why I, I like watching it. And at times I find it funny. Like, it was one time this guy asked you a question and he started with, how are you? And you were just like, Fine. Thanks for asking. You know, I, I found it hilarious. You know, there's there's some parts of your channel that I genuinely find funny. But in this case, you did not know what to say. So I'm going to do you the favor of schooling you and anyone who has doubts about this question. Right. So, you know, yeah, there's dangerous things. There's dangerous people. There's dangerous shit going on in clubs. But it's a fun place. People go there to have fun. Right. And so what are you supposed to do You're, if someone starts shit with you? This is a question that I personally get a lot, you know? All right, here's what you do. How do you win fights in clubs? You don't fight. I mean, hello. Like Ramsey said in one of his videos, he's like, uh, uh, serious crime in progress, you know, assault. It's like if someone assaults you or wants to be violent with you on the street, what do you do? Or at your house or whatever, you call the cops, right? That's right, right? You call the cops. Ramsey's almost making it seem like there's nobody there at, at the club, like there's no authority in the club. It's like, dude, there's bouncers. That's what we're there for. You're talking about in your video about well, clubs are full of people who can handle themselves. It's like, yeah, dude, it's full of people who can handle themselves. And, uh, who do you think those people are who handle all those people who can handle themselves? Yeah, there's us right here, the bouncers. You know, we're the ones that know how to control other fighters, other people, other crowds, brawls, uh, drug dealers, uh, stabbing, shootings. We're in between all of that shit every fucking day. 
every fucking weekend. And if you say, you know, like, yeah, stay away from those places. Uh, uh, don't go there. You're walking into the wrong rooms. Uh, um, live in constant fear of people pulling out knives, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, that's what we do for a living, fool. That's what we do for a living. Every fucking day, we put on the uniform, we put on our our stab-proof vest, our bulletproof vest. Depending on which country you're in, some countries you're allowed to carry weapons, some countries you're only allowed to carry like a mag light like this one. Like here in Holland, you can only carry your mag light. You're not allowed to carry weapons in Holland. Mexico, different story, but that's another topic. The point here is the bouncers. If you're frequently going to the clubs, people, men, women, especially men who know, who know how clubs are, who have experience in clubs and know what they're doing, tip the fucking bouncer. We're not there just to stand like an idiot by the door, you know? It's a difficult fucking job. Be nice to the bouncer. If you got a choice between picking, between tipping the waiter or tipping the bouncer, my advice to you is, especially if you're in a club or a bar, tip the fucking bouncer. Tip the fucking bouncer when you get there. Tip the fucking bouncer when you leave. Be nice to them. Tip them. Be respectful. Don't start shit. And as soon as someone starts shit, yeah, you go and you snitch them out with us. Some people... Will, you know, don't want to do that. They don't want to look like a snitch. But those same people are really quick to call the cops when some shit goes down, right? So, I mean, we have a more difficult job than the police guys. Bouncing is more dangerous than police work. Anywhere you go, you know? Why? Because most of the time we work unarmed. Most of the time we're outnumbered. If we get into, in between a fight, most of the time, almost always, we're outnumbered. It's two or three or four or five people fighting. We have to get in between that shit, right? Until backup arrives, sometimes then we outnumber them. But basically, we're always outnumbered. The police, do, they, they, they don't act until they have more than sufficient backup and more than sufficient other cops who are armed. So it's a different thing. We actually fight for a living. We get down. And we street fight for a living. So you come to us and we will very happily grab the troublemakers, put our foot up their ass, and throw them out the door, maybe with our shoes still halfway up their asses. That's what we do. So that's what you should do. You come and you tell us, hey, buddy, this guy did this. Hey, this guy's mad dogging. Hey, you know, if the guy, even if it's a little thing, even if the guy is not really pushing you or doing anything yet, right? If he's uh, just mad dogging or just being a troublemaker, pushing people with, the, you know, bumping into people with the shoulders or being rude to the girls or whatever, right? You come and you tell us. We will be very happy if you do. Why? Because you're saving us a whole lot of trouble. If you saw it before it started and you come and tell us, you halfway did our job for us. Our job is not necessarily to punch people and throw them out. I mean, it happens all the time and we do do it, of course. And most of us do enjoy it. But um, Let me take a sip of my coffee, guys. Ah, yeah, most of us do enjoy it, of course, you know? Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing that job. So we will appreciate it if you do that. You will, you, you will doing half our job for it because our job is to see it before it happens. Our job is to prevent fights. If we see a troublemaker, get him out before he starts some shit or at least talk to him. So if the guy is barely starting to do some shit, I'll walk up to him. I'll be like, hey, homie, not here. First and last warning. If you fuck up again, I'm throwing you the fuck out. I'm not even going to tell you nothing. I'm just going to throw you out, right? So I'll go up and I'll tell him that. And then based on that, how he acts then, you know, if he says, yeah, sure, blah, 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 you know, I'll still keep an eye on him. But if he gets cute with me, like, yeah, whatever, you can't tell me what to do, 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 do. I'll throw him out in that same fucking moment at that moment. I will tell him, hey, homie. I'm not talking to you. You got three seconds to start walking. I'm starting to count. One, two, I don't even fucking get to three. At three, I'm already throwing you out. That's how quick it goes, you know? So, yeah, I remember once I was working in a club in uh, Los Angeles. Leonardo's La Boom in Huntington Park. Very ghetto club, ghetto people, gangbangers. Lots of fights, 50 bouncers, you know? It's like a, it's open every day. It's one of the biggest nightclubs, Latino nightclubs in Los Angeles. And, uh... I remember one day I'm sitting there, standing by, um, by uh, one of the tables, and uh, there was three preppy people, like real preppy, preppy Mexicans, like light-skinned white Mexicans from Mexico City. 
I, don't, I think they were tourists. I don't think they'd ever been there before. And they're, 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 they're sitting on their table. They order a bunch of beer, right? And I don't know where two cholos, two gangbangers, they go and they sit where they're sitting and they start drinking their beers just like that, you know? So the girl walks up to me and she says, Oh, you get tipo de gente trabaja aquí, eh? Like she said in Spanish, basically in a real preppy way, like what kind of people you got like coming to this place, you know? And I'm from Mexico City myself, so I recognize the type of people that they were immediately. And, you know, it was funny to me. It's like, well, what do you fuck you think you are, Pedregal? You know? Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Zona Rosa, Pedregal, or, or uh, some other preppy area of Mexico City? It's like, dude. Why? What's up? I had told them, you know, I didn't say that. Of course, I thought that I was like, OK, what kind of people do we have here? Fuck the people sometimes. What is what is the problem? He's like, you see those guys over there? They sat on our table and started drinking our beer, you know. So, yeah, basically it was two guys and one girl, but they were preppy as fuck. You know, and those homeboys are just fucking sitting there drinking like it's all good. So I noticed immediately that they were pretty heavy guys, big guys, tattoos and shit. I could tell they probably done time. So I radioed the other guys. I flashed one, I radioed the other guys. I waited for about three or four other guys to get there, you know. We roll up to the table and I start talking to them. I, I, I tell the dude, hey, homie, it's time to leave. Get up and start walking. You got three seconds. And he's like, chale, he's going like that, looking at his homeboy laughing. I was like, homie, if you don't get up right now, I'm about to drag you out. You got three seconds. One, two, all I heard him say was, you can't drag me. So I grab him by this arm. So I'm standing here. I grab him by the arm. He starts to want to punch me. Another bouncer grabs his arm. We start beating the shit out of both of them. We just, we threw them out, gave him a beat down, threw them out of the club, right? Because these guys will fight back. They'll fight back. They'll stop you. They'll break the ball on your fucking head. You got to grab them immediately. And if they get crazy, you fuck them up and you throw them out. So basically we fucked them up. We threw them out and uh, came back. The three kids are standing there fucking terrified. I was like, there are your seats. I'll replace your beers for you, you know? They did not fucking stay long, man. I mean, after that negative fucking experience that they just witnessed, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, I punched and kicked those guys and I don't know how many times, man, really. But that's how it goes. That That's like a worst case scenario, right? Where we actually have to beat the people down. Many times, it's sufficient to just give them a warning. Other times it just isn't. But that's what you do, guys. You tip the bouncer when you get there. You're nice to the bouncer. You say hi to the bouncer. Then you know you're good. Like, think about the bouncer, right? Uh, most people are assholes in clubs. Most people are not very nice, especially men. Women love us. Well, most women love bouncers. I mean, women, they hand us numbers and shit all fucking night. They throw themselves at us and shit. So women is different. But men, men usually don't really like us, you know? For many reasons, you know, but uh, when you're the guy that actually is nice to the bouncer, you talk to the bouncer, you're polite, you don't make trouble, you spend money, you give tips, we will appreciate you a lot, you know, we will, trust me. Bouncers are not all assholes. I, I, I can honestly admit, I don't like most bouncers. I don't like most cops. I've dealt with bouncers and cops in three countries, Los Angeles, America, Los Angeles, Mexico, at the clubs in Mexico, outside of the clubs, I've dealt with the police here in Holland. I know what the cops are like. I don't like most cops. I don't like most bouncers. Most of them are doing those jobs for the wrong fucking reasons. They're either corrupt, they're either uh, uh, violence hungry, money hungry, power hungry, you name it. They're, they're doing, most of them are doing for the wrong reasons. For these reasons, I don't like most of those people. Like the bouncers that I actually like, the cops that I actually like are like, out of 100% of those kind of people that I know, there's probably 5% that I like, if not fucking less. But that said, I, I, I got to work with them. Whether I like them or not, it doesn't matter. It's not personal. You're there to work. You're there to do a job. You're there to count on each other. So, you know, that, yeah, that's it basically, you know. Ramsey, you don't know what you're talking about sometimes, man. You know, when you're talking about street fights, when you're talking about clubs, when you're talking about about nightlife, all that shit, you know nothing. Really, though, like, you've been in one street fight in your life. You've been in one, not even street fight, a school fight, right? You've been in one school fight and you got fucking jumped. You know, because that's how it's in the street. You're outnumbered. Us bouncers, we deal with that 
Every fucking weekend, we're outnumbered. We're used to it. I cannot even remember. I was. I never even started counting my fights. I don't. I cannot remember how many fucking fights I've been in. That many, and not just fights. I mean, many, many, many other things, man. I've I've seen kidnappings in Mexico. I had people kidnapped out of my club. You know, I uh, I uh, I worked in Acapulco in the um, in the most exclusive club of the country, and I also worked in Alebrije, which was the biggest club. In that city. The year I worked there, the year that I was head of security of the biggest club in Acapulco, that was the year 2011. That year, Acapulco became the most dangerous city in the world. So basically, I worked in the biggest club in the most dangerous city in the world. What does I tell you? That year that I worked there as head of security, there was not one club in the world that was more dangerous than where I was working. And I was in charge of the entire security team. 55 bouncers. Three armed military personnel, ex-military, ex-military are allowed to keep their weapons in Mexico for life. They're allowed to carry it too. So a lot of them do private security work. They can't fight, but they know most of them can't fight and they're past their prime, but they know how to fucking use weapons. They know they and, and they have the experience. So yeah, that said, you know, that same year. Another head of security of another club, smaller club, but really nice club as well. Not that far from where I worked, was fucking killed, right? So, uh, yeah, the club I used to work at, name is uh, Alebrije. Here, I put up a picture. That's, that, that's me and Alebrije. This is the same club where I witnessed several kidnappings. These images you see now are from a... Uh, a video that talks about the kidnappings. It's like a rumor. A lot of people, like the people that were there, didn't talk about it, not even to me right after it happened. No one mentioned it. So no one talks about it. So it became a rumor. Like, did the club close because of the kidnappings? Well, I can tell you guys, because I saw it, I was there. I was responsible for the security of these people. I was responsible for these people not getting kidnapped. So I can tell you guys that I was there, and but that's that's maybe for another video. If you guys want me to do a video on that, I will talk about that. I'll put up another picture. This is me and uh, the most exclusive club of the country, Baby O Acapulco. And these pictures here are all from me bouncing in the Netherlands. That said, I have 32 years experience in martial arts. I started training when I was four. I've done everything from, uh, I've, I've trained and competed in judo, karate, taekwondo, MMA, and the street. Now competing in the street, but street fights, club fights. If you don't want to call it street fights, call it club fights, bar fights, whatever the fuck ever, grass fights, concrete fights. Whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, that's my advice to you guys. That's my advice to you, Ramsey. Do you got school today? You got preached today. Maybe you needed some preaching. I think you needed some preaching. I think, I think a lot of people in your channel assume you to assume that you have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. I mean, there's some things that I've, that I've seen in your channel that I didn't know about that I was like, oh shit, I actually learned something new watching Ramsey. You know, which is rare. I, I hardly ever uh, learn something new from another martial artist or something, you know. Like most of the stuff I see Ramsey talk about, I already know. 
But once in a while, he'll mention a, a thing here and there that I didn't know, which, you know, and I think the channel's funny. That's why I follow it. And I like Rapsy, dude. Honestly, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't dislike the guy, but I have a big problem with people putting up false information out there, you know? Like this pendejo, uh, Master Wong, you know, also. I mean, I'll get into that full later, you know? But people listening to his shit, I actually, if you think he's funny, great, whatever. He is funny. I find the fucking channel funny. When I want to crack a laugh, fuck, I'll put on Master Wong and I'll laugh my ass off. But I have a big problem with people thinking that that shit is real. That the shit he talks about works and people paying for his classes and all that other shit. I mean, it amazes me how naive and how ignorant people can be at times. Especially when it comes to fighting. You know, and um, yeah, I guess that's it, pretty much. So if you guys have any questions regarding clubs, regarding women, girls in clubs, bar fights, street fights, um, any of these type of topics, uh, bodyguards, uh, Mexico, uh, the Netherlands, I live in the Netherlands, lived in LA. If you guys have any questions about any of these three countries or what I've done or what I do, just ask. I have a list of videos like these that I will make in the future, but I don't mind making a, a video based upon a request from you guys. So, yeah, that said, much love to all of you. Catch you later.